While editing the last video, I heard something knocking against the balcony window. I turned my head, got closer to the window, looked through and found a tiny bird sitting on the ground breathing heavily. I realized that it had just crashed into the glass, which could hurt it really badly. I didn't know what to do, but I couldn't leave it there, especially since it was raining. Cookie immediately ran to the window and started looking at the bird, but not with the eyes of a predator. He seemed to think that we should help it somehow too. I opened the door and slowly get closer to the bird, trying not to frighten it so that it wouldn't jump down and become some cat's meal. But it didn't go anywhere. The closer I came, the more I felt it needed help, because usually wild birds stay very far away from people. There was some liquid beside it, and at first I thought it was blood, but then I realized it was excrement. The bird was sitting and looking at me, as if it understood that I was trying to help it. It's unbelievable. Wild birds, as a rule, never let that happen. She was probably terribly shocked by hitting the hard glass. Then I tried to pick it up. But it triggered the bird's instinct, so it jumped back a little, making some sound. I tried again and this time managed to grab it. The poor bird wasn't even breaking out. Now we had to think about what to do with it and where to keep it before letting it back into the world. First, we put it in a dark cardboard box so that it could relax and calm a little. In the meantime, we took the old aquarium we used to keep shrimps in. We cover its bottom with some sawdust we borrowed from Stefan. Then we put moss and twigs so that the bird could have some more natural surroundings. On top of it, we put a towel so that it wouldn't jump out. Before putting the bird inside, we gave it some water, because food is something it could live without for some time, while water is extremely needed. Its eyes were closed and it seemed to have been dying, but as soon as it felt a drop of water on its beak, it swallowed it and opened its eyes full of life and energy. Just look how beautiful it is! The eye looks like it's painted. Fortunately, the bird liked the aquarium, so it was rather calm. Feeding it was unlikely to work, because it is so tiny that if we held it in our hands, putting some food inside of its beak, we could possibly cripple it. Moreover, it would be really stressful. Many people when helping birds make the mistake of feeding them bread. You should remember that bread is not the right food for wild birds, because they are used to eating insects and baking may just be the cause of their death. We decided to keep them until the next day, letting it recover, gain strength and hopefully become ready to fly to its friends. We covered the house with a towel, providing darkness and left it to rest. When I got to the room in the morning, we found that the towel had been slightly moved. Cookie was lying on the floor and the birdie was gone. My head was full of horrible thoughts, but then I looked around and saw it on top of the closet, alive and well, jumping on old things and even doing little flights. Cookie was sitting on the floor, looking at the bird with his huge eyes and making some kind of cat incantation that I've never heard before. Finally, we may let our little birdie out. Hopefully, it has recovered and got enough strength to fly and get its own food. I slowly opened my palm. The bird was thinking for a moment and then took off. It made a short landing on a lamp, apparently to say goodbye to us, and flew away to the tall spruces where it probably lives. Seeing how briskly it was jumping and flying around, we were sure that it was capable of taking care of itself again. We are really glad that we took the bird in, because who knows what would have happened if we have just left it out there on the balcony in the rain.